who him and his two passengers in the plane both reported a hundred foot long snake. They flew over it once. They're like, wait a minute, what is that? They were, they were Dutch Belgium in the Congo. Um, they flew over it once, went, what is that? And flew over it two more times to verify it and got so low to the ground that they said the snake struck at the airplane and all three people, the pilot, this well-respected colonel and the two passengers had the exact same story. So what are your sort thoughts of different. on giant anacondas? Like, because there's oh, always boy. been this thing about enormous anacondas that live in the rainforest. So, yeah, there's fascinating. So, I love anacondas. I believe, and I've got a colleague, Brian Fry, um, in Australia, actually, and he, he has a similar belief that there are 30 foot anacondas. Now, 30 is a big anaconda, but you're talking about those mysterious, like, 100 50, footers. 100 footers. Yeah. Okay, so take out the Amazon and take out anacondas for a second. Okay. All right. Think about where all the largest snakes are in the world. Okay. Florida. <laughs> well, now, <laughs> yes. But, um, you know, we've got all these wet tropical environments that ha that house these yeah. huge snakes. In, in Indonesia, you have articulated pythons. You have Burmese pythons. You have African rock pythons, Indian rock pythons, anacondas, all these big snakes. Yeah. The only place that has a wet, tropical, humid, high density of prey environment that doesn't have a massive snake is the Congo, Central Africa. Mm, now, interesting. stay with me, These that area is home to some African rock pythons and stuff, but not big monster anaconda-sized ones, right? But during World War II, there was a colonel who flew over there, and this was a well-respected colonel. I'm sure, Jamie, you'll be able to find this very quickly. A well-respected, like, I forget, he had, like, his wings or his, his patch of honor or whatever, like, very distinguished, who him and his two passengers in the plane both reported a hundred foot long snake. They flew over it once. They're like, wait a minute, what is that? They were, they were Dutch Belgium in the Congo. Um, they flew over it once, went, what is that? And flew over it two more times to verify it and got so low to the ground that they said the snake struck at the airplane and all three people, the pilot, this well-respected colonel and the two passengers had the exact same story of this giant snake in Central Africa. Interesting. Yeah, and yet no big snake has ever been proven from there. But it's also a very poorly biologically explored area. Yeah, here's the picture. They they're, took a photo of they it? They did. Yeah, they did. Um, they're in very low densities. So, hmm. That's the real photo over on the left there. What did they think it was? They thought it was a giant snake, a 50-foot long... So that's the photo right there? I believe so. Um but the story is fascinating of these kernels. But they don't know like what kind of snake. They don't know if it was a no. anaconda or no. python. Or... It would be an undescribed species because the only snake there, the African rock python, doesn't get that big. What is the biggest snake that we know? Oh, it says it measured approximately 50 feet in length, saw brown green with a white belly, has a triangle shaped jaw and a head three by two feet oh my god <laughs> a three foot head the photo was later analyzed and verified to be genuine van leard uh claims that is that how you say his name i'm not sure but that was that was the colonel remy van leard as he flew lower for a closer inspection the snake rose up approximately 10 feet giving a warning that it would have attacked a helicopter if it had been within striking range. But imagine flying over and having a snake sort of lunge at a helicopter. Imagine a three foot snake head. Jesus so, Christ. Jamie, do you mind going to my Instagram Literally quickly? Literally swallow you alive, Dude, easily. Look, look at this one. I posted a picture day before Whoa, yesterday. Oh, look at the size of that thing. That's an 18 footer and oh look at how, God. granted it's not three foot by two foot head, but still that thing, you know. What's like, the weight on something like that? Uh, it was over 200. It broke our scale. Wow. Yeah, it was over 200 pounds. Did you ever see the Jennifer Lopez movie? Anaconda? Yeah. <laughs> the documentary? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's great. It's, it's such a corny movie, It's man. so good. The, the bad, yeah. like, snake head, oh, if you watch it so today. Bad. It's so bad. It's so bad. It's so bad. But that was always the rumor, is that there was enormous snakes in the Amazon. Yeah. And that, you know, you just didn't see them. I, I do believe that there are some megafauna out there that are yet to be found, that are in low populations. Like you, you believe in the sloth, the giant sloth. I believe that has a... Yeah. And again, that's like the thylacine. It's a proven animal. It's been 10,000 years, but it doesn't mean that it couldn't be extant in certain remote areas. Same with some of these big snakes. Maybe not 50, because maybe these things are embellished, but maybe 30, maybe 35, right? Mm. And I just think that there are a few, not a lot, of these big things out there. If you're one of these uncontacted Amazonian tribes, of which there are still several, 
Pop West Papuan tribes, whatever, and you're seeing a 50 foot snake. Nobody in the Western world, we're not hearing about that. Right. You know, like right. those things can be happening and those stories get embellished and passed on and all of that. But we wouldn't even know until Western science gets in there. And it's sort of a double edged sword because once it does, it sort of ruins certain aspects of that. Right. Mm. So but I do believe that there are big animals to be found still.